Okay, so this is going to be specifically about the cooling fan system. <clears throat> okay, so what do we know about this already? We know from the uh, no crank video that the cooling fan relay is interrupted by the starter motor. And we'll get into that a little bit later, but basically what that means is when you go and turn the key, this signal from the ignition switch to the starter motor opens the relay, turning the power off to the fan, so there's no excessive current draw there. <clears throat> okay, so what else do we know about this? Let's take a quick look here. What does this mean? Well, let's figure it out. So we got power goes through the relay over here to this high speed cooling fan relay, which by the diagram here we can tell is five wires. We got coil, coil, power in, power out, power out, or input, output. So <clears throat> This is supplied power through a splice, just like this coil here. Um, so what controls these? Let's see, we got a power train control module. <clears throat> controls between high speed and low speed. We also have power train control module. Controls the low speed. <clears throat> So, power flows through the relay, through this relay, back down to the harness, back through this relay, and to the fan. So, what else can we tell from this? PCM control is high-low speed. Okay, that means that depending on coolant temperature and or if the vehicle is equipped with air conditioning, it can turn the high-speed relay on when the AC is running to cool the condenser. Okay. So what do we know about this here? This is controlled by the PCM. So this relay is grounded, turning the relay off. So that means that without this PCM input, this one, without this PCM input, the fan should run all by itself. <coughs> Okay, so here we are. Um, here's our diagram. Here's our pieces. So, this is the cooling fan relay, which is right here. I'll show you that in depth here in a minute. But we also have these two relays down here, which are attached to that little bracket down there. And let's see, we have a high speed and a low speed. Well, let's see, we got two random relays down there, how do we tell which one's which? Well, one of these is going to have three power wires coming out of it. One of them's only going to have two, so let's see what's this. This one's only got two, two coils, this one's got three, so that means this is the high speed relay in blue, and the black one is the low speed. So, power flows through the fuses, through this relay, down through this relay, right here, then through this green wire, down into the harness, back up into here, and then down through the fan through this yellow wire here. <clears throat> so, let's see what happens when we turn the key on. <clears throat> okay. So, fan doesn't run. Let's take a look at our diagram here. So we know that the PCM controls both of these relays. So what happens if we do the American thing, send in the Liberation Force, and deprive this relay of this ground? So, find the relay in a community, they've already set this up, but if we take away this input, <coughs> fan comes on. Okay, well that's a good sign. So when we put that ground back in there, we can hear the relay click to the off position. 
So, I could pull this other wire out here. This, oh, uh, what color is that? This red wire here. I could pull that out and uh, switch it to high speed, but it doesn't really matter. So, what else do we know here? Okay, so we're driving along. All of a sudden our gauge starts going up. By the way, the cooling fan, according to Ford, is supposed to come on around 230 degrees, which is about the A, the L area on the gauge. Um, due to manufacturing processes and variations in the stuff, everybody's gauge is going to be a little bit different. They're not all going to be exactly the same unless you get a, you know, super expensive digital one. Okay, so let's see if I can get in here. These, this right here, this two wire sensor is the input to the PCM. This little one wire guy right here next to him is specifically for the dash, the gauge on the dash. Okay, so these sensors have absolutely nothing in common with each other. One is just a gauge and one's an input for the PCM. <clears throat> so, how do we know that they're working? Well, you have, to, you have to find the table in the service manual. You have to measure the resistance to ground. So there's positive temperature coefficient, there's negative temperature coefficients. Sensors, two different types. Basically what that means is, uh, depending on the temperature, the resistance changes. You know, the difference between positive and negative is which way the resistance goes. Some of them will get higher resistance, some of them will get less resistance. So we can test the gauge for movement, but it's not a very effective test. So let's take a look here. <clears throat> Keys on, our needle is pointing towards the C. Hi baby, what you doing? <coughs> Eating a broccoli? Okay, good. It's very helpful. Okay, so hopefully that stays. Unplug this. I'm gonna jam this piece of wire in here. Like that. And then I'm going to take this piece, this end, and I'm going to put it right there in the negative terminal. Negative terminal. Wrong terminal. <coughs> okay, so we come in here and take a look at our gauge. And you can see that it's completely pegged out to the other side. So, we can tell that the gauge is at least doing something. Which is a good sign. And if we hook it up to the positive terminal, which is stupid, probably shouldn't be doing this, but see the gauge drops all the way below the other side of the C. Well, let's unhook it before it does something. I'm just doing that because I don't really have a plan for this car yet, and I just don't really care. Okay, so go ahead and plug this back in. Plug this back in. Okay, so what have we learned so far? Uh, we learned how the system works. Um, we need to know a quick way to test the fan. So, sitting there in traffic, and temp gauge goes up, temp gauge goes up, and all of a sudden the engine goes, <laughs> and your valve seat dropped out of your head, which happens. So, is it because it overheated because of a bad thermostat or a clogged radiator or because the fan just didn't come on at all? Well, we know from our testing that the fan normally wants to be on, but the PCM turns it off. So either the PCM input from this sensor right here is bad or the fan circuit is inoperative. So how can we test that? 
what we know that uh, this relay has power and an output and it goes to the starter motor through the ignition switch so let's try something here real quick okay so we know from the previous video that here is power output to the fan and starter this is the starter control circuit right here this is the power and this right here if we take this wire and jam it in there fan turns on so that's a quick way to test the fan also from here what we can do is we can test the starter but that's not all that we can do we can use this pin right here to back feed power through the ignition and I can do this standby okay so we can back feed power through the ignition through the terminal on the right and Oops, I don't have it in there right. Okay, so, just get the big focus. So I got power back feeding through the terminal. So from this point right here, from this relay, we can test the fan. We can test the starter. And we can also back feed power through the ignition. But this doesn't really help us all that much. Um, I mean, there's some things that this could be helpful for in diagnostics, but really it's not going to help you much for anything. So that is how the system works, and that is how I can test it. Um, let's see, anything else? Let's see, it's taking a look at the diagram here. See, this could be a little bit confusing, but we have with AC and without AC, um, it's the same thing. It's just the way that the motor's wound. It's got different windings in it. Not a big deal. This doesn't really mean anything. The wires are the same, and the ground is the same. You know, same same color wires, same circuit, everything, just a different picture on there. Um, so I guess that's pretty much it. There's a couple other things about the relays. So, if the fan doesn't run, um, how do we know which, which relay? Um, without getting into a lot of really complicated, not really complicated, but just in-depth uh, testing. Basically, just replace these two relays, or replace all three of them. Um, that's the simplest way to do it without getting in there. And, and from from this pan, you could juice up the, the fan with a power probe or a piece of wire, or whatever. You could get down there to that connector down there and juice the fan up from there just to make sure it works, but you know, basically, what you need to do is come in here to these uh, wires and start probing around in here with a voltmeter. So, we come in here to this light green and black. That is the input to the relay. So, if we have 12 volts here, then we should have power also on this light green one. That light green one then runs in here to this light green one. And then the PCM turns off the relay. So what you should do is come in here to this light green one. Jam your voltmeter in there. And test and see if you have 12 volts. If you don't have 12 volts, then you need to come back here and test from here. If you have power here and not here, then you have a break in this wire. Which is probably not ever going to happen. It's most likely the contacts in this relay have opened. Um, 
So if you don't have power on this light green and black wire right here, then you need to come back up here and test for power here. And if you don't have power there, then you need to go back and check your fuse. If you don't have power there, then you need to test continuity between the fuse pin and the battery. And if that's open, then you got more problems than you need to fix. Okay, so that pretty much sums it up for the basics. I'm not really going to go in any more depth than that. That's how to test it, and that's how the system works. Bye-bye!